Greetings once again. You know, recently in the U.S., there was an assassination attempt on the former U.S. President Trump. In fact, there was, there's been two. Okay. Now, with the first one, I followed that a bit more. The second one, I didn't really bother with. I've been traveling and things like that. But but what you'll notice is there's like a tendency in the media and in, there's just the, the flow of information to just kind of let it go, just kind of let it go on. And there's like, it seems to be almost an intentional uh, desire to see that kind of fall out of the news cycle and out of the public uh, consciousness. And that's very, very bad. That's very bad because it was such a serious incident and such a grievous event uh, that it needs serious reflection from a political standpoint, from the standpoint of an American citizen. Serious questions need to be asked, and they have not been answered even yet. Now, I want to use this political perspective to just look into a spiritual incident, and that would be the debacle concerning uh, Steve Lawson. Steve Lawson um, has been publicly exposed for having an ongoing adulterous affair for at least five years. Now, what's so scandalous about this is the persona, the public perception of Steve Lawson, and not just Steve Lawson, but all the people that he was connected with, the ministries, Master's Seminary, uh, John MacArthur's church, uh, his church there in Trinity in Dallas, uh, his own ministry, One Passion Ministry. What's so absolutely scandalous about this whole thing is the type of sermons that he would preach. He preached one of the best sermons I ever heard on the wrath of God. It was an awesome sermon. I, I mean, it was just, it was great. I would still listen to it today, probably a little bit differently, but you know, Steve Lawson was a great preacher. In fact, in my opinion, he was the best of that whole bunch. He was the best of all of those guys that kind of move in that circle. But what's so exceedingly scandalous about it is that that group of people by and large, has been above reproach. As far as we know, financially, morally, and many people think as well theologically, if you agree with their version of of theology, etc. But what I want to point out is this fall, the fall of Steve Lawson, it deserves serious and ongoing Christian reflection, especially, particularly if you are a Reformed Baptist or a cessationist or a John MacArthur fan or somebody who follows their movements or follows those movements and follows their, the Shepherds Conference, follows that sort of a ministry, because there's just no question about it. That thing happening to such a high-profile figure it brings real serious questions to the surface, like how was he possibly able to get away with that? If these men and the way they run their churches and the theology and the doctrine they're preaching, etc., is so above reproach, how could he have possibly have gotten away with that? Something breaks down. Something is not right. And I don't mean this in a sense to cast aspersions on MacArthur or whatever, the, the movement as a whole per se. But friends, let's face it, in this modern resurgence of Calvinism, there's a lot of Christian idolatry going on. And a lot of these figures have reached some sort of a, of a godlike status, untouchables. And the fall of Steve Lawson, if it shows anything, it shows that that is a completely false perception. It is completely false. And if he hadn't have fallen or been exposed, it would still be true. And that's the thing that really should give us pause. It, it should really bring us to a point of serious reflection. We should not overly idolize men, nor should we overly idolize a ministry. And we should not overly idolize these movements. And 
because the reality is they are just as much man-made as the next church or the next ministry. In other words, maybe God is with them. I'm not saying yes or no. God has helped them yes or no just as much as any other church any, in, a, in a large sense, any other Orthodox denomination. I'm not talking about heretical denominations. I'm not talking about Mormons or Jehovah's Witness or Catholic. I'm talking about Protestant or Anabaptist or uh, evangelical would be the best word, denominations. Um, we see that these are the same. Their godlike status must come down. And God himself is the one who is bringing it down. And this is not to denigrate those men or to speak evil of those men or of their churches. What's the point of that? I don't know how they're living at home. I, I, I just know their public, the public perception. But one thing I do know, there is a lot of idolatry going on. There is a lot of blind following of people that are full of knowledge. They are full of doctrine. They are full of theology. But look at Steve Lawson. We can see very clearly he was full of all of that, but he was not full of God, at least not for the last five years. And so we need to be very careful who we follow and when we do follow people, to what degree. And I feel sorry for the people that are were the fans of that camp. And the one thing I ask and the one thing I hope is that I don't mean that you reject all those men or reject all their ministries. God has used some of them in my own life personally. Okay. So I, 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 I give credit where credit is due. I read a, a phenomenal book by John MacArthur many, many years ago at the beginning of my ministry. So I, I recommend it to this day. That's fine. God used him. God uses those men and God will use them. Hopefully, as long as they walk rightly. And even if they don't walk rightly, God could still be using them. That will come out in time. But friends, you cannot blindly follow these men. Follow Jesus. Don't follow John MacArthur. Don't follow Justin Peters. Don't follow Phil Johnson. Don't follow these men. Follow Jesus. Don't follow Steve Lawson. Where would that take you? If you were literally following him with all of your heart and all of your soul, you will follow him to hell because that's, that's the path that he's on right now if he's not repented, if he doesn't repent. So, the surface, the appearance was something that it was not in reality. Well, I think that if we follow Jesus, we'll be, even though we do follow men to a certain degree, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So yeah, there's a place where we, we follow men, we emulate men, we, we look up to them in certain areas. There's things we can learn from. I, I read many classic books. I, I like Martin Lloyd-Jones. I like John Wesley. I like, there's many men that I like. There's many men that I learned from. I loved A.W. Tozer. I love the Chinese evangelist John Sung. I, I have many so-called heroes of the faith. I like, you know, Hudson Taylor, a missionary to China. You can learn a lot from these men. You can study their lives, etc., but you cannot worship them. And um, I think that we need to truly get away from Christian idolatry. And, well, let's face it, God is the one that exposed this ministry, ultimately. If you believe in the sovereignty of God, then you'll definitely believe that God exposed him. Let's allow for a time of reflection. And I hope those that are in that reformed cessationist camp, I hope they will be the first to enter into a time and a season of mourning, reflection, and humiliation, because there is so much arrogance coming out of that camp. There is so much haughtiness coming out of that camp. There is so much spiritual superiority and theological superiority, but in so many areas that camp is flawed, desperately flawed, and if the Steve Lawson debacle shows anything, it shows that. It shows that. May God help us all. Hope this has been helpful to you. May God bless you.